welcome to Bonang Travels. My name is Bonang and welcome to, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Welcome to a segment where we are going to be following my travels. <laughs> All right, so unfortunately, well, fortunately, I only have one episode, so you're in luck. You have plenty of time to catch up. So on Bonang Travels, we are going to be following my journey in my journey from joining Qatar Airways and becoming its cabin crew to some of the places I've been around the world and my experiences. And I will try to come up with a few recommendations. Yes, so welcome. Should be interesting. Before I start, this is Bear Bear. He is, I don't know, I'd like to say a souvenir. He's a reminder of my life as cabin crew. And this is the new plant that hopefully does not die. Say hello. All right, um, if you haven't already, please go like the channel and hit the subscribe button. It would be nice to have you and let's go on this journey together. So, becoming cabin crew, I was a final year student at uni and then my cousin, yes, let's call her my cousin, she's my cousin, my cousin, Horata, then came and said, guys, I wanted to attend an open day for Qatar Airways in Johannesburg. Uh, we live in Botswana. So I was like, okay, cool, tag along. I, I fancied a trip to Joburg I'd never been. So I thought, okay, let's do this. So then we... Got on a bus, went to one of the most dangerous places on earth, aka Park Station, and then <laughs> attended the open day. It was a three day open, three days, I think Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So first day, CV dropped, we dropped our CVs, and we got an invitation to the next day. The following day, Sunday, Sunday, we did a English test and then followed by a round of eliminations after the English test we had um, What do you call this? After the English test, what did we do after the English test? I forgot <laughs> I think Oh, yeah, we had like a reach test. We have like a little little semi one-on-one -on -one interviews where they asked us questions I think just to get a feel of our personality and we had a reach test You have to be able to reach two one two centimeters on your tippy toes and then after the reach test, we had uh, group activities. They wanted to see how you function as part of a group. Are you the kind of person who talks over people? Are you able to let people articulate their viewpoints? Are you able to articulate your viewpoints without, you know, making other people feel bad about their viewpoints? So, yes. And then finally, the last day, Monday, one-on-one -on -one interviews where they just ask you questions to get a feel of who you are as a person and see whether or not you would be a fit for Doha, Qatar. Yes. That was us. Let me see. Okay, landing in Doha, Qatar. Uh, I received a ticket to go to Doha. So the ticket was from uh, our airport, Cesar Sakama Airport. And I would be transferring in Oartambo International Airport to go to Hamad International Airport in Doha, Qatar. So... The moment would have probably been after a long, grueling day of travel because I, I don't know, but there was a lot of time in between my flights. I had like an eight hour wait at Oar Tambu. So after the eight hour wait, I then had another eight and a half, eight and a half hour flight to Doha, Qatar. On the flight, I kept seeing the crew and I was like, oh, so this is going to be me. Like, this is, this is, this is it. This is life. And then that moment, I guess I really didn't know much about Qatar even when I applied for the job. I only found out after I Googled and researched it. So when I got to Doha, that moment for me was we landed. We landed, it was a bit dark, so I couldn't see properly outside. And then when we got to the airport, I could see all these other people dressed in black and white, just like me. I was like, okay, so clearly we're going to the same place. And then we got on a crew bus. And then as we're driving out of the airport, I wish you guys could see the drive, but it's so green and it's so beautiful. I couldn't believe that it was a desert. 
And at that moment, I actually know the exact moment. The street lights. The street lights in Doha, Qatar are very tall and are covered in Arabic. I don't know what it says, but they're very tall solar street lights covered in Arabic. When I saw that, I was like, yeah, I'm not in beat up anymore. <laughs> The hardest part about leaving home would have definitely been living on my own for the first time because throughout my four years in uni, I lived with my parents. So I had never lived alone. So it was the first time that I would ever live with any person that was not my family. So it was difficult adjusting to someone from a completely different country, from a completely different culture. So yeah, that would have been the hardest part and leaving my family behind. Ah, uh, yes. There was a point in time when we sort of all freaked out about being trafficked. The, during the recruitment process, there was a point where they needed our passports. So, all human trafficking there's always a point in time where someone needs your passport or someone has to hold on to your passport. So they needed our passports in order to get us SIM cards because you need to register the SIM card to a person. So evidently your passport is at this point, my only form of ID. So I get there, I, I go to crew accommodation. I have a beautiful, nice flat, but passport, they need my passport for a few days. So at this point I'm thinking, mm, I don't have a phone, I don't have internet, how am I going to talk to anybody back home? How will I even leave the country without a passport? So, yes, that was, uh, I think it needs some, I don't know, that was just it, that, that's it, yeah. I met a lot of interesting people. Uh, the first person would have been, I was in communication with a girl who I found on Facebook. There was a group, a cabin crew group, and she asked if anybody was joining on a certain date. And it so happened that I was also joining on that date. So I sent her messages and she's like, oh, I can't wait to meet you. And funny enough, we didn't meet right away. We met during training. We were supposed to meet before training because we ended up living in the same place, in the same building. But because of no internet, hadn't hooked up internet to our flat yet, so there was no way for me to communicate with her, and I had actually forgotten to take her number. And that happened, and I was only able to sort of see her during training. But then during training, it was we couldn't really go out because training's hectic. My, let's start with the food I missed most from home. The food I missed the most would have to be, I missed our beef. I won't lie. Um, I take it, I think it's easy to take it light when people say Botswana has the best beef and I know it's an issue that's up to debate with our neighbors. But Botswana has the best beef and when I moved to a different country and I tasted their beef, I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, no, this is, this is not it guys. Like, oh, there was, there was just something like I could tell the difference. It just, it wasn't the same. It, it went through a different process, maybe because our beef is mostly free range, but I could tell what a, I, I generally didn't like eating beef when I was there, so I ate a lot of chicken. I rarely ate beef, so I missed the beef. I missed biltong. I missed so many things that I took for granted. And the food that I liked the most when I got there, oh my gosh, I forgot the name. It's an Arabic dish, I forgot the name. Mm. Oh my gosh, what's the name? Yo, ah, it's gone. Uh, you have it with, with, mm. 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 
Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go look for a picture and I'll insert here because I cannot for the life of me remember the name of the dish, but it's sort of like it's beans and it's mixed with vegetables and then they normally eat it with bread. So I liked that surprisingly and apparently it's a very Arabic dish. Main differences between Doha and Khaburoni would be okay, the main differences between Qatar and Botswana would obviously be religion, the first. Doha is Qatar is a Muslim country, Botswana is a Christian country. Um so that would be the major difference. Another difference is the way that we we dress because theirs is guided by by Islamic law, we dress very Western. It's very fluid, very free. There, there are some rules that you need to follow with regards to dress code. The food is different, as I mentioned earlier. The, their beef tastes very different from our beef. Everything was just different. Yeah. I'm used to I'm used to brown colored eggs on the outside. I got there, I saw white eggs and I was like, okay. So yes, the vast differences, the climate is very different. Um, the, that's what you call this. Because of the various differences in religion, the christmas over there is very mellow christmas here is you know high-spirited as we would like to call it family festive so everything around you is festive yeah so so those are some of the differences that you find thank you for checking out today's video on next week's video i will be looking at all of the countries that i've been to and some of my favorite and who knows, maybe some of my least favorite <laughs> countries to travel to. And thank you so much for watching this episode. Please do look forward to more content from Bonan Travels. And don't forget to subscribe and like the page. Hit the notification bell. Also, don't forget to like the page on Facebook. It has been a pleasure. Don't forget to also like the Insta our Instagram page. It's called Duke and Thai. But I will also post some Bonang Travels content on there. Shukran!